you might own a set of nothing year ones and you've been considering upgrading it but nothing in the market really seems to cut it so you have considered moving on to the other two sets that nothing has available in the market but you've been wondering how it stands up against the first generation if you would like to see any of my in-depth reviews on any of these earphones i'll leave the links down in the description below and of course thank you to a good friend and supporter of the channel for making this video possible by sending me your nothing year two thank you wilson for making this possible so let's jump straight into how these are built as you know nothing has stuck to a transparent look for all of these cases so you can see the earbuds through the case even when they're closed this does look cool but comes with the disadvantage of being super easy to scratch since it's a glossy surface if any of these live in a bag or pocket you'll see more scratches if it lives more on your desk you'll see fewer scratches the year one and year two look almost identical except for the few things like having the case slightly smaller on the year two the thumb grip section is also smaller and the lower magnet is visible on its case as well the year two also has a more crystal like look to its case than the previous gen and sharper edges instead of rounded ones the ear stick has gone for an entirely different look compared to these two but has a very neatly made texture where the branding is it's a nice refresh from the usual lid popping cases since you turn the case to gain access to the buds all of these feature a reset and sync button as well as usb-c charging when it comes to the buds all of them carry a similar theme except the ear stick since it's an open design and the metal meshing on it does give you a premium look and feel especially since the housing has a matte white finish unlike the glossy white finish on the year one and year two the year two and year stick have squeeze controls which can take a little getting used to but i prefer what they did with the year one the tap and slide controls worked perfectly usually newer generations earbuds never fit into their previous generation cases but the year two buds sit perfectly in the year one's case but they don't seem to close the circuit since they don't display the case's battery when placed in the case that aren't theirs so it's safe to say that they won't charge unless they're in their own case i'm not sure what you're going to do with this information but there you go when it comes to the ingress level the year one came with an ipx4 rating the year two comes with an ip54 rating for the buds and an ip55 rating for the case and the year stick comes with an ip54 rating for the buds so these should be fine for any outdoor runs and gym use The year one and year stick come with Bluetooth version 5.2, whereas the year two comes with Bluetooth version 5.3. The year one and year two both have wireless charging, but the year stick does not. Uh, something I really came to like with the year one was the touch and and slide controls, especially when it came to the volume. But the newer generation comes with the pinch control, which does taking a little getting used to. But if you do want to go in depth and really control these earbuds, you can go into the Nothing app, which has evolved tremendously ever since the first generation version. You get an equalizer with which you can really fine tune your personal sound settings with. I'll speak about this in the chapter about sound. Then you get the controls option which lets you customize the pinch or tap controls for either bud. Within the settings you can toggle the in-ear detection on and off which I really appreciate while doing comparison videos. You can toggle between having the low lag mode on or off. You have a find my buds feature. You get a high quality sound option with the year 2 as well as dual connectivity and a ear tip fit test and of course you get a firmware update option for when there is is an update when it comes to active noise cancelling it's only the year one and year two that support this because the ear stick has an open design so it doesn't create that tight seal to be able to do this both the year one and year two perform very similarly and they do quite well in fact but the main difference is with the year two you can do a personalized ANC setting which you can do within the app itself. Nothing claims that these can drop your decibel levels by up to minus 40 dB and I don't doubt that because both of these do very well with eliminating droning noise whether they're fan motors, AC motors or even traffic nearby. All of these earphones have three microphones per earbud. Now they do function with the active noise cancelling. This falls for the year one and year two but the ear stick also has these and these microphones help towards making your environmental noise cancelling a bit better so your voice can stand out a bit clearer for your recipient and if you would like to know how your voice would sound to anybody you're speaking to there really is only one way to find out i'm calling from the usual busy street that i do all of my call tests from just to give you a sense of the environmental noise that all of these earphones are going to be battling so of course you will see a lot of two wheelers four wheelers uh, some trucks uh, possibly you might hear some pressure horns uh, which can cause a lot of issues with the environmental noise cancelling and there is of course a lot of construction work going on over my left shoulder so uh, of course this will have a lot of battery but uh, in the past reviews that I've ever done of any nothing earphones have always handled the environmental noise pretty well in fact so I have been on the camera microphone all this time and I'll switch over to the nothing ear one microphone right about now 
So I, I've always liked the way we sounded on calls. In fact, uh, whenever I've uh, uh, pitted it against any other set of earphones, it's usually done pretty well. So uh, I don't doubt that the year one did pretty well for its time. So uh, what I'll do now is I'll shift over to the nothing ear stick right about now. So, of course, for me, from where I'm standing, uh, there is a lot more noise coming in because the ear ones did have the active noise cancelling on along with SCU. So, those passively isolated you pretty well and the active noise cancelling also did help in this, kind in, uh, in this kind of environment. So, right now, I can hear all of this bleeding in, of course, but you will be hearing, uh, uh, I think, a much better filtered version of my voice, excluding all the noise through the nothing ear stick. And, of course, you are sitting in the reviewer seat right now to see which one of these earphones you like the best. So, this has been the demo of the Nothing Ear Stick and I'll switch over to the Nothing Ear 2 right about now. So, these are how the Nothing Ear 2 are going to carry a voice. Now, you would be the best judge to see if there has been an evolutionary change between the Nothing Ear 1 to this or even for that matter between the Ear Stick and this. Now, uh, for me, this is so much more pleasant to use in a busy environment again because it has the active noise cancelling and that seal. So, even if the active noise cancelling were off, I would see a passive isolation compared to all that honking and so on that you can hear behind me. So, uh, I would prefer this kind of earphone in a busy setting and not the ear stick, of course. But in this situation, we are checking to see how good the environmental noise cancelling is. And of course, if any of these are good enough for you, you are the best judge to decide exactly that. And I do hope that this demo has given you a better understanding of these earphones. And I will see you back at the studio. Look at me sometimes. The year one and year two have 11.6 mm dynamic drivers, whereas the year stick has a 12.6 mm dynamic driver. These support AAC and SBC codecs, and the year two also supports the LHDC codec. So, if your broadcasting device can support this codec, it will unlock the high res audio potential. All of these earphones support frequencies from as low as 20 hertz all the way up to 20,000 hertz. The Nothing Year 2 sits slightly louder than the Year 1, so I wouldn't recommend listening to this anywhere beyond 45 and 50% because both of these do sound pretty loud at that volume, more so with the Year 2 than the Year 1. Both of them tend to thin out a bit when you start listening to them at lower volumes, which is expected. I wouldn't recommend listening to these beyond 60% volume for a prolonged period of time if you want to preserve your hearing. The Ear Stick, on the other hand, needs to sit at about 5% louder than any of these earphones because of the open design. You're bound to have a lot of sound bleeding in as well as bleeding out. Soundstage with these is very similar to most other TWS earphones because uh, you do get a dead center phantom channel and good left and right separation. But uh, the illusion of sounds coming from out of the earphones does happen, but this happens very rarely. On an imaging front, I always liked how the Nothing Ear One handled itself, but I never thought that anything more was really needed from a set of earphones that are that size or cost that much. But the year two is surprisingly better focused. It's easier to zone in to certain nuances if you're trying to appreciate your music. Uh, it's just uh, a lot more better structured than the year one for sure. So uh, if you do like enjoying certain nuances in your music and uh, you have a set of year ones, you will see the difference between the year two and year one. The year stick is surprisingly well detailed. In fact, I didn't think it would be as uh, well detailed when it comes to the Nothing Year One, but I say it sits almost at par with the Year Two. Uh, because of the open design, it isn't as focused as the Year Two is, but it does certainly stand up to the Nothing Year Two's detail recovery. High frequencies are brought to you with a level of excitement that a budget set of TWS earphones definitely cannot achieve. I always liked the way the Year One was tuned and it's no slouch here. It's well detailed and rich in the right areas without being piercing. But it does tend to sound a little mellow compared to how the Year Two handles this range. The Year Two can tend to sound a little on the piercing side, which is why I prefer how the Year One handles this range. The Year Stick handles this range with what seems like an extremely exaggerated presence since it's compensating for the lack of a proper seal. But it does stay clear from being too sharp, but can tend to seem a little on the shriller side of things. Listening to radio 
your heads, no surprises. The year one is the easiest on the year with this nostalgic and beautiful track. I do prefer it over the other two for longer listening sessions, but if you prefer better richness in this range, the year two does handle this range with more enthusiasm in delivery and excitement. The most notable detail between these two is how much more detail the year two carries in this range compared to the year one. Then when you move on to the year stick, it has good detail and presence here, more so than the year one for sure, but it is bound to have less excitement here compared to the year two because of its open design. It is enjoyable to listen to in this range for sure. Mid frequencies is where my love for the year one starts to fade ever so slightly. When you put the year one up against the year two, you start to notice where it falls back. The vocal range between these two is quite different despite having similarly sized drivers. The year two has a more rounded delivery here, whether you're focusing on vocals or instruments. The year two has more presence than its previous generation set of earphones here, making your listening session a little more intimate with them. Moving on to the year stick, which is no slouch here as well, which I wasn't expecting. It holds itself well up against the year two, but does in fact sound a little more pushed away from you, giving you a certain sense of dimension. After listening to these, the year one can tend to sound a little bored with its presentation. Listening to Dave Matthews' Stay or Leave, every sigh, every a cappella enunciation, guitar string pluck, or violin being played is carried over to you with good detail and fullness in its presentation with the year two and year stick. The year one does fall back here, showing that both these earphones are in fact an evolution over their first generation sibling. Low frequencies are handled in a surprisingly not so mass market manner. It's not exaggerated, but just right. The year one and year two have a slight difference in how they handle their lows, with the year two having a little more energy and glam in this range. They have good extension and are both quite enjoyable to listen to genres like EDM with. The year stick can be a bit picky with how it handles this range because of a lack of a seal compared to the other two. But as odd as this may sound, it's got the most body in this range when it sits well and close enough to your ear canal. It doesn't get obnoxious enough to eat into your mid-range much, which makes it good fun to listen. To. Listening to Major Lazer's Lean On, I found myself enjoying the year stick the most here because of how full it sounded. Sure, it doesn't have as much kick as the year two, but it delivers this lower range with more enthusiasm. The year one does fall back slightly compared to the year two, but it's clear that this was a first generation product despite how good it sounds. If you do want to tweak or personalize your audio, you can go into the EQ setting of the app now. Uh, it does have quite an extensive uh, EQ setting in the adaptive setting, but you can go into the simple mode where you can choose between a few different settings. Now, I have kept these all on their balance mode because I think this sounds the most neutral and the most flat and it is quite enjoyable. But the other settings you do get are more bass, which does as it says and makes things a lot more boomy. Then you get more treble, which also does as it says, but can make things a bit sibilant, more so with the year two and year stick. You get voice, which will emphasize the mid range. This works well with audiobooks or podcasts, and you can use a custom option here, which lets you tweak three bands with a plus minus six dB gain. Then if you want even more control, you can go over to the advanced tab, which gives you a whole lot more control with a parametric equalizer. The first thing you'll notice is a significant drop in decibel output, which is to prevent these from clipping or peaking if you boost a certain band too much. You get eight bands you can tweak with a plus minus six dB gain. And thanks to being a parametric equalizer, you can focus sweep the frequency range to fine tune it, as well as tune the Q factor to loosen or tighten up your bell curve to really personalize your sound. So to sum up, on a build front, I've never really been a fan of the whole glossy finish with any earphones and uh, nothing is certainly one of those. Now, I have had the Nothing Year One for well over a year and it has shown a lot of scratches and scuffs. Despite uh, spending most of its life on my desk, uh, the lower section is scratched up pretty badly. Uh, I, I do wish that they had some sort of a matte finish. Now, it's not that they don't know how to make a matte finish because the housing of the ear stick has a beautiful matte finish to it. In fact, uh, if they had stuck to this finish right through, I think a lot of people would have appreciated it more because it would just carry itself better. It wouldn't look a year old after three months of use. But otherwise, the overall build has stood the test of time because the nothing year ones I have are well over a year and it's it's survived well. It's it's done well. Despite, I mean, it has lived on my desk most of the time. I have taken it out a few times. Uh, I've maybe dropped the case a few times, but uh, it's not, not really broken apart. It's, it's put together pretty well. The earphones still slot in pretty well with the year one. So uh, I can expect even the other uh, sets of earphones, the newer gens, uh, to also stand the test of time because 
If the first generation could do it, so can these. On a feature front, I can't really complain because all of these perform pretty well. Uh, the year two having mul the multi-device connectivity, I think, is a very nice feature. In fact, a lot of new earphones are adopting this uh, multi-device connectivity and it does it pretty well. It does it pretty flawlessly. Uh, but the one thing I really do miss, uh, in fact, I've always liked the, the tap and slide control for the volume because a slide uh, gesture is, I think, the most natural way to increase the volume. On a sound front, it's very clear that the year two and year stick are in evolution over the year one because uh, the few places where the year one was lacking, these have stepped up. There's a lot more detail. There's a lot more imaging. Uh, better imaging. Uh, the staging is pretty similar, but uh, the year stick and the year two are richer where they need to be. And they, they are richer to an extent where you can enjoy the quality. Now, uh, when I spent a good amount of time with the year two for my in-depth review of it, I didn't really like the way it sounded straight out of the box. I still don't it's, whenever it's on its balance mode because some things are a little too pitchy uh, for my liking. So I found that if you're sensitive to higher frequencies, it, it can feel a bit... Uh, piercing for the ear. Uh, so you'd most likely have to go into the EQ settings and fine tune it to find your perfect sound. But having said that, because it has such good detail, it has such good imaging, uh, it's it's good fun to listen to when you're listening to uh, whatever music it is you listen to. And of course, with the year two, you do get the option of listening to high-res audio. If, of course, your phone or broadcasting device supports the LHDC codec. I do prefer how the year one handles its highs because it's a little more mellow. It is rich in certain places, but it's largely not as forward as the year two is. And uh, I, it's very clear that it paved the way. The nothing year one is what got nothing started in fact that was their very first product but uh, moving on to the ear stick for an open set of earphones i think it performs terrifically well because uh, usually because of the loss of uh, a seal uh, you do lose a lot of frequencies but they have done this uh, fairly well in fact now because of the lack of a seal you will find noises bleeding in and there is some sound that might bleed out so uh, you are most likely going to be sitting at a louder volume with the ear stick. But overall, when it comes to its detail and its clarity and its overall enjoyment, it's a very nice set of earphones to listen to. In fact, I was quite surprised to see that it could carry as much bass as it could. The bass is a little more enjoyable with those because, yes, it has a driver that is 1mm larger, but uh, the bass that comes out of it feels significantly bigger than uh, from a 12.6 mm driver. So when it comes to these earphones, I'd say they're pointed towards two different kinds of people because there are some people who don't like the seal at all, even though these aren't in-ear style design. People don't like the seal. They prefer having an open design. So it's nice that nothing has the option, in fact, for this because uh, having an open design also means you don't have to worry about that transparency mode. So if somebody walks next to you, you can just talk to them because you can hear them. Even if your music is playing, you don't have to go into your phone or uh, activate the transparency mode via the year two. Now, I'd say it just boils down to, are you someone who wants active noise cancelling and are you somebody who's okay with having an open design or prefers having an open, open design? Because both of these are nice products. They're obviously built very well. And I'd say they are value for money. But there is a big question mark when it comes to the year two because I remember when I bought the year one, it wasn't as expensive as the year two is right now. And I think that nothing year stick is a lot more affordable now. But speaking about the prices, how much are these going for today at the time of recording this? Um, the nothing year one, well, it's not available anymore, sadly, but it had an MRP of 7,299 uh, at the time of launch. Uh, but it was sold for 5,999, which I'd say was super value for this. The Nothing Year 2 has an, a maximum retail price of 12,999, but it is being sold for 9,999. The Nothing Year Stick has an MRP of 6,999, and I've seen it online for 4,999. So, are these uh, really value for money? Well, uh, I'd say for me, it's a big question mark with the Year 2 because, again, jumping from 5999 to 9999 is a huge. A difference uh, compared to the previous generation and uh, I, I wouldn't say it's that much of a significant bump in evolution be it its sound be it its features uh, and so on I wouldn't say it's it's worth that much more I, I still wish it were available for around 6,000 or even 7999 would make sense so it would boil down to your preferences do you have the budget for the year two does it make sense for you the year stick however I think makes a lot of sense for just under 5,000 rupees I think 
uh, it's super value for money because it's very rich in its detail. Uh, it's got a nice novelty to it because it looks totally different with its design. Uh, it's it's generally something. It's it's a conversation starter if somebody sees you. So. All in all, I'd say it, it does boil down to your preferences and what your budget is for each earphone. And I'd say both are very enjoyable. Uh, in fact, all three, I, I still have my ear ones, which I use once in a while. And the best part about all of this is that Nothing has spent so much time making that parametric EQ within the Nothing app. It's it's something you really need to spend time with and, and figure out because you can learn so much uh, about uh, sound through that. And you can even figure out to uh, fine tune the sound to your preference so I, I know I've had some people ask me what my preference is but uh, if one of you are watching this uh, my message to you is all of us have very different ears so your tune in mine will be very different but uh, feel free to, to spend some time with it uh, fiddle with it take three days take four days you're bound to get the sound you like and you'll definitely benefit from it so I hope you found this video helpful and informative and I hope I've helped you make some sort of purchase decision if you would like to support the channel I'm sure you know exactly how to but of course, thank you for tuning into Paul's POV for some sound advice.